Hello and welcome to Professor Pincushion. I'm Tova and today I'm going to show you how to create a cover for your sewing machine. Not only will a sewing machine cover keep your machine more protected when not in use, but it's ideal for keeping out the dust. I'm going to show you what measurements you'll need to create your own pattern and how to sew your cover together. Just because it serves a purpose doesn't mean your sewing machine can't also be fun. Let's go ahead and get started. Here are some of the supplies I'm going to be using for this project. So I have some pattern paper because I'm going to be making a pattern for my cover, a straight ruler, a pencil with an eraser for doing the drafting of that pattern. I have some all-purpose thread, some straight pins, one package of extra wide double folded bias tape, some fabric scissors, and I would also use paper scissors in order to cut out your pattern pieces, a flexible tape measure, and then I have fabric. So I have two different kinds of fabric, one for the outside and then a contrasting one for the inside. This is 100% cotton and I just got a yard of each. And then I have some fusible fleece, it's just one package of this, and you're going to also need your iron. We're also going to need our sewing machine, not only for sewing our cover, but also for creating our patterns. Since everybody's sewing machine is probably going to be a little bit different in the dimensions, you need to create your own unique pattern. So we're going to start measuring. I'm going to measure my sewing machine here with my flexible tape measure. The first measurement I'm going to take looking at the front of the machine is going to be the widest point in the width here. So I'm measuring at the base, but even though this is the widest point of the machine, you'll notice my wheel right here kind of extends a little bit past that. So you might want to add a little bit extra. And also we also need to account seam allowance. So I'm going to add extra for that as well. Because we don't want the cover to fit really snugly, it's okay if it's a little bit loose. With my measurement here, I would add between an inch and inch and a half extra just to give yourself plenty of room here. The next measurement I'm going to take is going to be across the front and back. This is gonna be one measurement. So I'm starting here at the table. I'm going up over the sewing machine and then across the back to the table on the other side. Now my tape measure is a little bit slanted. You want it more straight up and down. Just realize you're going up the top or up the front, over the top, down the back to the table. Looking at the side of the machine, I'm going to take the width of the machine, again, add a little bit of wiggle room, and then also the height of the machine. So from the table to the top. I'm going to draft my first pattern piece, which is going to basically be a giant rectangle. So I'm using my first two measurements that I got from the front of the sewing machine. So this is the width of the front of the sewing machine and then this long line here is going to be the measurement we took when we went over the front, the top, and the back of the sewing machine. My next pattern is created for the sides of the machine. So this again is the width of the machine looking at the side and this is the height. Now on one side of it, so I'm gonna say this is the top, I'm just going to curve these corners off because it's gonna be easier for us to pin it if we don't have to worry about a point. So after you do this curve, you can just go ahead and erase this part. At this point, I have two patterns created. So I have my main pattern and then I have the side pattern. And I laid it this way because this is the width of the sewing machine measurement and so is this is the width. I'm going to compare two lengths. So I'm going to measure, with my flexible tape measure, the side across the curve to the other side to here. So I'm not measuring this point right here. You're gonna take this measurement here and compare it to this line here because these two sides are gonna be sewn together. Whatever the difference is, adjust it on this pattern because it's a little bit easier. So if, for example, this is just a little bit longer, all you can do is just extend this so you're making a larger rectangle. So if this ends up being an inch bigger, just bring this line over an inch and then redraw your line. As an option, you can also add a pocket to your cover like I'm going to do, and it's really easy to create the pattern. You're gonna take the width of your main piece and that's gonna be the width of the pocket piece. So if I lay this on top of it, you can see it's pretty much exactly the same. The only thing you need to decide is how high you want your pocket to be on the front of the machine. 
I'm doing about five inches, I recommend you do about the same. So I go up five inches and then I draw a line and you basically end up with a rectangle. Now you'll notice on here for my pocket piece, I put place on fold. That's because I want a piece of fabric that's twice this width, I'm gonna end up folding it in half. So even when the pocket is sewn to the front of my cover, you're gonna see the right side of the fabric on the inside of the pocket as well and that way it'll look a little nicer. Now that I have my pattern pieces, I can go ahead, cut them out, and then cut all my fabric pieces out. So we have three pattern pieces that we're working with. We have the main pattern piece. I'm gonna cut one out of fabric one, one out of fabric two, and then cut one out of my fusible fleece. I have the side pattern. So there's two sides to it, so I need to cut two out of fabric one, two out of fabric two, and two out of my fusible fleece. And then pocket, I only need to cut one, and it's your choice on either you wanna use the same fabric that's gonna be on the outside, which is fabric one, or like me, I want a contrasting one, so I'm gonna be cutting my pocket piece out of fabric two. The first step is applying our fusible fleece to the wrong side of our fabric two pieces, so that's going to be the main and the two sides. When attaching your fusible webbing, make sure that the glue side of the webbing goes towards the wrong side of your fabric, and I already have my iron heating up on a high setting. I'm going to place a press cloth or just some cotton, I'm just using some muslin here over it, being careful not to shift anything underneath. And then I'm just going to dampen it with my spray bottle here. And then carefully place my iron down and you'll hear it sizzle. And I'm gonna leave it down there for about five seconds, then I'm carefully going to lift up the iron and shift it over to the next spot until I've covered the whole piece. And I can always test it by coming here and lifting it up and seeing if I can separate it. See, if, I, if this comes apart, that means it needs more heat or a longer period. So then I can just go ahead and do that part again. We're going to pin the two side pieces of fabric two to the long edge. So here's one, and I'm gonna do it with one long edge, and then you're gonna do the same thing with the other side and the other long edge. So my main piece is placed right side up. This is gonna be placed right side to right side. This was the width of our sewing machine, the width of the sewing machine, so they're gonna go in the same way. And this curve should match up with this line here. So to pin this, it's a little tricky, you're going to match the raw edges. I'm gonna start pinning along here. As I get to the curve, you're going to lift this and then just continue pinning. You're gonna just do a little bit at a time to get around that curve and go along the straight edge and then you're gonna continue going on to this other side. When it's pinned, it's gonna look something like this. So you can see I'm using the main piece to kind of be formed around to the side piece. So after this is pinned, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on this side with my other side, and then we'll take it to our sewing machine. I'm doing a quarter inch seam allowance here for my seams sewing on the sides. Now the tricky part, of course, is going around the curves. So you may have to do some adjusting. I'm just getting to a curved corner right now. You don't, you don't wanna have any wrinkles on the wrong side, so when I'm getting to a certain part, I'm gonna fill to make sure I don't have any wrinkles. If I do, I may have to adjust this a little bit just to get the wrinkles out of the way and kind of smooth out the area. And then I'll sew a little bit further and I'll readjust again. And it's definitely possible to sew the seam and end up with a nice smooth backside. So that's what, I'm, that's what my ultimate goal is. Next, we're gonna move on to the pocket piece. So I cut this on the fold, so my fabric piece is twice as big as my pattern piece. I'm going to take it, I'm gonna fold it in half lengthwise, and I'm going to press it so you end up with a crease on one side. This side with the crease is the side where we're gonna start placing our bias tape. So I open up my bias tape, it's double folded, so you have a fold here and then you can open it up and I'm actually gonna open up one side all the way. And you'll see that I have a crease there. I'm going to match up this raw edge, and it doesn't matter if what side you put this on because it's the same on both sides. I have the raw edge here, and then I have the raw edge of the bias tape here, and I'm just going to pin it along. 
this top folded crease part of my pocket piece and pin it till I get to this end right here. And then we're going to take it to our sewing machine and you're going to stitch right in the crease. I'm just stitching right in that crease using a regular length stitch. Don't forget to back stitch on both ends. And I'm just going to do it for the full length of that top edge of the pocket. Take your bias tape, fold it over to the other side. It's going to look nice and neat like this. So the edge of the bias tape should cover up your stitches there. And then you're going to take it back to your sewing machine and you're going to stitch right along this edge here and it should catch the back of the bias tape as well. I'm going to stitch right along that edge of the bias tape and again I'm just using a regular length stitch and don't forget to back stitch. Take your main piece of fabric one, place it right side up so you have the width down here and you're going to take your pocket piece now, you're going to place it right on top so those edges match up. And if you have directional fabric like I do, make sure it's facing the right way. And you're going to pin along these three sides because we're going to do a basting stitch here. The basting stitch is just a temporary stitch just to hold our pocket into place for now. It's the longest stitch on your sewing machine and you don't have to worry about doing any back stitching. With the pocket basted on, you have one large pocket that's going to be on the front of your cover. Now, if you want multiple pockets, you can use your fabric marker to draw a line and then you're going to stitch just a regular length stitch right on that fabric marker line and that's going to create individual compartments if that's what you wish. Just like we did with fabric two, you're now going to take the two side pieces and you're going to pin and sew them on. So you're just going to do the same way where you're placing them right side together and you're going to go to here, then you're going to flip this and do it for the full length. And you're going to do that for both sides. Once they're stitched on, for both fabric two and fabric one, you're just going to try to press your seams open best you can. Slip fabric one cover over fabric two cover so the wrong sides are together. Any seams you have, you're going to want to match that up and you're going to pin all the raw edges together. Then you're going to take it to your machine and do a basting stitch all along the bottom edge. Lastly, we're going to add our bias tape to finish the raw edge here at the bottom. So I'm looking at the bottom here. I'm going to take my bias tape, I'm going to open it up and I'm going to take one raw edge and I'm going to line it up with the raw edge of the bottom. Now I'm going to take this end and I'm just going to fold it about a half inch before I pin it. This is so when we end up flipping or refolding our bias tape, you're going to have a folded edge instead of a raw edge. So it'll look a lot nicer. I'm just going to pin this all the way around. So I'm going to keep pinning it until I get to the other side and it overlaps. Once I get to this, it can just overlap this by the same half inch. You don't have to fold the one on top, just the one on, bot on the bottom. So after I pin it, I'm going to stitch right in that crease. Then like we did before, you're going to refold. So it's going to go to the wrong side here. And then you're going to go ahead and stitch on top, catching the bias tape also on the back and that should finish it off. Here we have the finished cover on our sewing machine. If you have any basting stitches showing, remember to remove them. The nice thing about this cover is that there are no raw edges exposed, so it's reversible and can be flipped so that fabric too is showing. It doesn't have a pocket on this side, but you can always add this when you're putting the lining together. I hope you enjoy your new sewing machine cover. We hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe to get notified of our weekly releases. Also check out ProfessorPincushion.com to view our complete library with well over 350 sewing tutorials. If you would like to directly support us, you can check out our Patreon campaign and earn some exclusive perks. Thanks for watching.